Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Man, it is cold here in Texas. It is cold here in Texas. I, I know it's cold elsewhere, but... And my Canadian friends are going, yeah, I right. Know. This <laughs> you can't be, say that. I know, but this would be short weather for our family that lives up in uh, Manitoba. <laughs> but for Texans, it is cold. It was literally freezing rain. I was out driving around. I had a, Ooh, a networking freezing group. Freezing rain. I know, but you know. I know, it's relative. It's all relative. I'm just thinking because I'm... I'm a dual citizen of Canada and the U.S., and so I have to give props to my Canadian friends yeah. who <clears throat> endure the... The Arctic North. We plugged in our car every single night, mm -hmm. and... I plug in my phone. See, that's... That count your blessings, name them one by <laughs> one. <laughs> hey, you, you do what you got to do, right? Yes, but it is a beautiful day. I like these kind of days. It's I It's a too. gorgeous day, and we're glad that you're here with us. Today, we're talking about heaven on earth. And this is, what a great topic. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, we've, we've talked about this since I was a little girl. My dad used to talk about it all the time. How do you manifest heaven on earth? Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you mm -hmm. have to die to experience heaven on earth? We don't believe no. you do. In fact, the more you press into the word of God, the more what we're going to talk about today that we've learned the more we put aside all the things that make us tied to this world, the mm -hmm. more we experience divine blessing, divine healing, wholeness, health, mm -hmm. wellness, abundance. Miraculous. The miraculous. Mm -hmm. that, and, and that's really why we do these, is not so that we can go, oh, we're all that. Mm -hmm. I love what, uh, what uh, Vanessa said. We're not all that. He's all that. Right. And the more we become like him, the more we get all that he is. My dog is like. Dude, show him. I come it's here. It's the funniest thing. Like, big man and a little dog. And she just sits there <laughs> and she does not want him to pick her up. No. She wants him to go with her. She, she's so like. So he gets close to her and then she scoots away. Scratching my leg and, and whining and all that kind of stuff, but she doesn't want me to pick her up. Good Anyways. morning, everybody. Glad that you're joining in with us. Love seeing everybody pop on. Um, I want to open up real quick by reading something out of this chapter, Heaven on Earth. This is such a great chapter, and uh, it's chapter 12. 12 is the number of foundations. But I let me just set it up like this, and then I want to hear what... Mm -hmm. Out of the book, Unleashed and Anointed for Business. Yes, <laughs> yes, you guys can get that on our website. Um, but we've been going through chapter by chapter. This is chapter 12. Listen to this today, and let this encourage you uh, this morning. Um, okay, Heaven on Earth, chapter 12. Heaven is invading earth every second of every day. You're either encountering the miraculous or it's passing you by. Somewhere right now, someone is extending the hand of God's generosity, touching the untouchable, loving the unlovable, rescuing the brokenhearted, defending the helpless. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. All of that love and all of that good, that is heaven touching earth. How does heaven touch earth? Well, sometimes it touches earth like the oil we talked about yesterday. If y'all didn't see that video about the oil that's flowing out of the yeah. Bible, it's a miracle. I it's, saw it for myself. You posted a video on YouTube of a trip that you guys made it out to Dalton, Georgia, you and Mitzi Rick. And hi, Mitzi, I see you're on. 24-hour <laughs> flowing of oil. Mm -hmm. It fills up this container. It's even overflowed twice, and it's been doing it since 2017. It's amazing. So sometimes it's a miraculous where... It's not about human involvement. But the way heaven touches earth usually is that the Holy Spirit of God has come to live in us mm -hmm. and I'm able to love the unlovable, touch the untouchable, speak of word of kindness. That's how heaven now engages in earth. You know, when Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, he also knew that there was coming a one, a Holy Spirit that Jesus would go to sit at the right hand of God the Father, but there would be one that would come to be a counselor, a guide that would flow in us and through us, that no longer we would need temples of man or, or tabernacle tents, but that there would be the Holy Spirit of God living in us so that God, just like he did with Jesus, could infiltrate a human being. Isn't that amazing? Infiltrate a human being, Jesus, who could walk and talk and touch. So people said, he said, when you see the Father, you're seeing me. Mm -hmm. And so when people see you, who should they see? The mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. They should be seeing a glimpse of heaven 
on earth. Let me keep going. This is awesome. So defending the helpless. When we awaken to the consciousness that God is with us and in us, we can begin to sense the greater purpose that he has for us. And this is a big one. Ego is the arch enemy of the miraculous. God partners with our humility, not our pride. Ah, mm. that's a stinger. Mm -hmm. Ego is the arch enemy of the miraculous. You're praying, you're praying, you're praying, but when you're praying with people or even when you're praying to God, are you truly loving others? Are you truly, truly wanting the best for them, seeking the best for them? Or are you wanting it for yourself? Because ego is the arch enemy of the miraculous. Yeah, I've seen people's egos get in the way of their ministry and their business, you know, and ego, man, if you, if you have an issue with your ego being uh, the most predominant thing someone sees about you, you'll have troubles. We've dealt with that in the past. Yes, we have. We, we've come through a season but where- But even, even in our own self, right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah like mm -hmm. we, you know, where you think you're doing good, you think you're doing good, you, and then you sit down and you really go, well, what are my motives right now? Mm -hmm. my, are my motives to truly see people healed, mm -hmm. saved, restored? Mm -hmm. Is oh. it, is it, because we would always say that we're kingdom builders yeah. and we do this for the kingdom of God, but deep down inside, there was this motive of ego mm -hmm. that I need this in order to be identified. I need mm -hmm. this in order to be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, I need this rank position, you know, in our businesses right. in order to, to prove that I'm worthy. Or I have to have this title in, in business. You know, I have to be a vice president or a, a chief something or another. And, and a lot of that is rooted in an ego of, hey, look at me. You know, look, look at me. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished versus look what God's doing through me, right? There's nothing in our lives that has been more liberating than to strip ourselves of the titles mm -hmm. that we have. And that doesn't mean that we won't ever have a title. And of course, Jesus was titled King of Kings, Lord of Lords, right. uh, bright and morning star. So it's not that there, but my prayer is that we won't be titled because of a job or we won't be uh, our, our heaven on earth won't because we're trying to make a kingdom here, mm. but because we are representing a kingdom of love, of patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, the fruit or the proof of heaven on earth. Right. We were in a, a building yesterday and on every window they had a fruit of the spirit. And I said, mm. ah, I want that in, in my life. I want on every window every portal my mouth my eyes my ears my my heart my hands my my mind my feet let mm. every extension of my life have the fruit of the spirit right love joy peace patience kindness gentleness self control yeah. you want to sing that song don't you fruit of the spirit is love and joy peace and patience kindness and goodness gentleness and, and faithfulness, faithfulness and self control too, too. That was my love to y'all to get him to sing. <laughs> every day she's trying to make me sing. Share this video with everyone you know. Oh. Every time you hear him sing, like just share, 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 share. <laughs> y'all need to be hitting the love, 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 love button too. <laughs> no. So he'll sing more. Uh, how, how does this line up with the word of God? Well, let's, let's look at the scripture. John the Baptist said, he must be greater and I must become less. That's John 3.30. Uh, last night at our prayer meeting, I was just crying out. I was on my knees and of course everybody was worshiping and I was saying, more of you, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. I want more of you, less of me. I wanna give God more capacity. Why is that? Because we have our struggles, we have our own pains, we have our own family issues, we have our own opportunities. Everybody does. Sure. But the more you focus on those things, the more you're making yourself a God, your situation a God, your circumstances a God. And when you go back to seek ye first the kingdom of God, now you're less of me, more of you. Right. Less of me, more of you. Mm -hmm. And you really are making your true north, everything that you're going through. If you're going into a meeting and if you feel like this could be going bad, 
less of me, more of you. And now seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay, God, I, get, I put this into your hands. You've got this. Silence your flesh. That's a part that we talk about in this chapter is how to silence your flesh, the voices. You know, if you didn't hear the chapter about the lice and insects and how the anointing oil covered the ears so that the lice and insects couldn't get into the sheep. Cover your ears today. The gossip, the murmuring, the complaining, the the emotions. So many times we judge people based on our emotions or on our past or our history. And I want to encourage you today, let the word of God, let the word of God govern your heart so that when you're with people, you see them with the father's eyes. You mm. see them, you hear with yeah. father's ears. And be careful who you're judging, right? Don't, don't judge. That's not our job as, as Christians, as human beings, we shouldn't judge. And, and you know, sometimes that's a challenge, right? And one of the things that, that we get judged for sometimes is like when we share a testimony, people say, oh, you're just saying that because you're trying to have a, a light shining on you. No, we're, we're sharing a testimony because we're trying to encourage other Christians to go out and do something that's, that, uh, that God wants us to do, to share the gospel and pray for people and love people. And, if, and, and if, if we're not trying to shine a light on ourselves, we're trying to shine a light on what God's doing out in the marketplace. I was just thinking, we've got really nice people that follow us publicly. We've got people behind the scenes that'll say stuff to us, but we've got really nice people. I think we'll, be, we'll have arrived when the haters show up. <laughs> we do I'm have... not calling them in, but no, I'm just saying no. we've got people who post really nice things. Good morning, everybody, yes. by the way. Um, they're lovely. They're posting comments about scriptures. Um, but in the real world, when we come off Facebook Live, ooh, I, when we walk into the presence of somebody who has a demonic spirit or who is influenced by the demonic realm, it surfaces, it manifests. And when you see that, you realize that there is a light darkness clash. There's a clash between light and darkness. Part of this chapter talks about how do you humble yourself? We know that in order to engage heaven on earth, you have to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. How do you humble yourself? The scripture right now says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. What does that mean? That means to fast and pray. The best way to humble your flesh or silence your flesh is to tell your flesh, your emotions, even your hunger, you don't rule me. If you've got emotions about people in the office and you get there and it's just a zzz, you don't rule me. You worship anyway. Mm. You know, I know even personally, I'm a warrior. People see me as a warrior and I'm strong and I pray for people and I lay hands on the sick and man, I'm like the girl that I get called. If there's a de demonic spirit manifested, call Stacy. And that's a warrior Deborah spirit that God has blessed me with. But every warrior is a child. Mm -hmm. every warrior is still in flesh. So I'm still a girl. Mm -hmm. I still feel. So how do I silence my feelings and, and be able to still penetrate through doing what God's called me to do? I fast and pray. Yeah. And when we fast and pray, what we're doing is we're saying my flesh will not govern me. Remember way back, we're going to start posting these in YouTube. So if you missed a series, like every week is a series. One of the series we talked about was, well, one of the series was capacity and how to decrease so you can give more capacity to God. Mm -hmm. But another is how that we can really silence our flesh and come into a place where God can be bigger so we can be less. And when we do that, he manifests. Mm -hmm. We see heaven on earth. We see people restored. We see what Jesus said and these signs and wonders, these heavenly signs and wonders <laughs> will follow, will manifest to them that believe they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll cast out demons. They'll take up snakes. In other words, they'll be able to handle snake spirits like the Python spirit or all the demonic spirits that are around and they won't hurt them. You'll be able to walk into a realm. You'll be able to see into a room. We were talking last night with a couple we went to dinner with. You'll see into a different realm that other people don't see. Why? Because you've chosen not to have stick em feet or Velcro to this earth, but you've chosen to fast yourself into a heavenly place here on earth. Yeah. Read that scripture, Matthew 6, <clears throat> says, 6, when, 16 to 18. says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites. Do, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. 
for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. Fasting, uh, when we talk about this in the book, is, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to fast TV, or I'm going to fast. That's not really the way they, they did it back then, because that's not as physical as what fasting should be, a buffeting of your body. Um, it's okay. That's great. We love that. If that's where you're at, then do that. I've um, had friends say, I'm, I'm fasting vegetables. <laughs> yeah. oh my God, that's not a fast. <laughs> but really what you want to do is intentionally put your body, your flesh, your, your emotions, your stomach under subjection. Day one, and it might be something like a Daniel fast, or it could be an all fast. Uh, but what you're doing is you're telling your body, I, meaning I, the spirit of I, the, not the flesh. I remember we're 1% flesh. It's another series, 99% mm -hmm. spirit. So 1% flesh. When we die, we're going to drop this flesh. We went to a funeral yesterday. We're going to drop this flesh, but the spirit of Stacy Wallace, the spirit of Larry Wallace will live forever because of our commitment and our relationship to Jesus Christ. So we are 99% spirit. The problem is those Velcro feet to the earth, we spend more time thinking about what am I gonna wear? How am I gonna do my hair? What kind of car am I gonna drive? What kind of house am I gonna live in? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do what, in the earthly realm, in the 1%. But when we focus on the 99% of who God has made us to be in Christ, then we begin to realize fasting is very important mm -hmm. because fasting silences the 1% and says to the spirit, my, my attention is on you. I'm here to mature you, to develop you. What happens when you do that, when you seek first the kingdom of God, what is the kingdom of God? It is not meat or drink or in the 1%, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy. So when you put your emphasis on prayer and fasting and reading the word and instead of meditating on your greatest TV show or meditating on your favorite novel, you're meditating on the things of God. And you may think, well, that's not fun. Oh yeah. Well, next time you walk into a room and demons manifest, you'll think it's really fun because it's no longer on a TV screen. It's in your real life. When you walk into a room and somebody passes out and you know that you've got the spirit of the living God, that while the medical people are doing their thing, you're doing your thing and you see things take place. When you are able to walk in abundance where you don't have sickness, you don't have disease, you're not living on chemicals anymore. That's a fun life. And so a lot of people trade that life, seeking righteousness, peace, joy, pressing into the fruit of the spirit, the things of God, in order to sell out to this world, earth on earth, you can have heaven on earth, or earth on earth, and earth on earth has got a lot of little clauses at the end of that commercial. <laughs> I mean, those commercials like those medical, that, yeah. Like those uh, um, drug commercials. And oh my goodness. I've seen Those some that tell wild. you that your peepee's not gonna work anymore <laughs> and that your your they, nasal passages might shut down and you might not be able you might be incontinent for the rest of your I'm like, yeah, I was like why would you wanna take that? I know, it's funny. But there's a lot and I'm not saying this now this is where I could bring out the haters. Oh she's only need to come up all your medicines. No. I'm saying we dog. don't live that way, no. but we put a huge emphasis on the spirit realm so that we can live in divine health, so that we can have heaven on earth, so that we can have a peace that passes all understanding. But there is a price tag for that. And the price tag, as you said, is knowing that there's a way to buffet your body, fasting, praying, pressing into God. It might not sound, loving people when you don't wanna love them. Mm. Oh. Touching people when they've got leprosy. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about what Jesus did. It right. was pretty amazing. He loved the unlovable. I want to read you in closing here. How do you bring heaven to earth? This is beautiful. Probably w before I met you, I would always tell people this is the 90s because we met in 1997. No, we met in 1995, <laughs> but we married, married in 1997. Um, Let me help you with your dates. <laughs> thank you. When's my birthday? 
No, don't say it's it. It's this year. Yeah, I know. It's this year. It's June 9th. <laughs> we're, we're, we're making progress. Yes, we said that we said, I've said this a number of times this week. People who have their kids showing out. Let me say this before I talk about Mother Teresa. Um, progress, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. When we adopted that, it brought such peace to us as parents because we've homeschooled our kids. Mm -hmm. And if, if you know anybody that homeschools, you often think, even right now, Alexia's graduating this year, and I'm thinking, did I do enough? Did I do enough? Did, did, I, did I give her enough? Did I teach her enough? Um, does she really know how to add and divide and subtract? Does, mm -hmm. You know, you just you question yourself as the parent because you've put that responsibility into your hands. And um, I have no idea why I was telling that. Progress, not perfection. Oh, progress, not perfection. So I, that God spoke that into my spirit one day, and mm -hmm. he said, Stacy, progress, not perfection. And when that came into my heart, man, it lifted it off my kids. It lifted it off of me. I don't need you to be perfect. I just want to see daily progress. Mm -hmm. And when we adopt that, we can realize, oh, maybe to, yesterday I wasn't so great. Well, today do something that moves you forward. Progress over perfection. Mm, that was good. liberating yeah. for me. Okay, Mother Teresa. This is really awesome because Mother Teresa actually in the in the 90s I, I wanted to I wasn't going to get married again. Mm -hmm. Gone through great pain in my past. I can see that earlier this week I told that story. Um and so I I studied Mother Teresa. I watched her. I wanted to go to Calcutta. I wanted to be I, I wanted to give up all my clothes and find a black smock. I didn't want to wear white because I thought it would get too dirty. Um, but I just- you were practical. I, yeah, I was. But back then there were these little sling, slingy kind of material outfits that everybody wore. Lindsay Roberts, or Roberts' daughter, granddaughter-in-law sold them. <laughs> mm. And I was thinking, I'm gonna just, just wear those and I'm going to go to around the world and I'm just gonna love the unlovable. And uh, this is what Mother Teresa says about, uh, this is the day that she won her Nobel Peace Prize. This is pretty powerful. She said this speech. Um, she quoted the words of St. Francis of Assisi, who said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me be love. Where there is injury, let me pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope where there is darkness light where there is sadness joy O oh, divine master grant that i might not so much seek to be consoled but let me console others to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love for it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life that really is the life of bringing heaven on earth. How do you bring heaven on earth? Less of me, more of you. Mm, Less good. of me, mm -hmm. more of you. Suddenly you're the hands and feet of God every day, mm. wherever you go. Suddenly you're the voice of God. Suddenly you're seeing people right where they're at and you're loving them mm. right where they are. Mm, that's good. Good. Love the unlovable. Right? <laughs> I love you. It's good stuff, babe. Well, it's going to be a great day, everybody. And I'm so thankful for everybody's time each and every day. It's, uh, it's an honor that you watch our videos. And so if you have an opportunity, like, share, and uh, let other people know. We appreciate it. Yeah, bring heaven to earth for somebody today. I'm a little choked up inside. Yeah, I could tell. And, little, and little I'm thinking more. about, there were three moms last night. Yeah. At our prayer meeting. And um, all three of them were praying for their kids, mm. away from God. Um, even in our Washington Connect group for our M women, um, women who, you know, their kids started off just trying weed. And it went from weed into crack and ice and mm. just moving from one thing to the next. And I just see these moms saying, please pray for my kids. They're not, I haven't talked to them in months. I'm hurting. And that is why Larry and I encourage you 
to witness in the bathrooms, witness in the restaurants, witness on the streets, because you never know when you are being the angel that some little mama is praying for. Mm. It's not about, oh, Larry and Stacy, they just have to tell everybody what they're, no. We hear the prayers of the moms and dads saying, my child is somewhere. Well, what if you are sitting next to that child today? Will you say yes to the Holy Spirit? Will you say, hey, can I pray for you about anything? And it remind them of their mama who's praying. Will you be the hands and feet of Jesus? Because that is bringing heaven to earth. Yes, that's it right there. I pray for you today that you will be bold. You will be courageous. You will know that you are being mobilized even right now today to go into all the world and preach the good news. Be heaven on earth to someone else. Allow yourself to be a conduit of the Holy Spirit. Watch how the Holy Spirit jumps into your finances, jumps into your relationships. When you make it less about you, more about Him, more about serving His kingdom on earth, just as it is in heaven, you'll begin to see, and I thank you, God, for this, that you are a faithful God, that you've got us, you've already provided for us, you already know what we need before we even ask. So, God, we put you in the spotlight today. We make you the biggest part of our day when other people are showing out. God, let us reflect you to the unlovable. Let us touch the untouchable. Let us be joy even when there is sorrow. Let us be tender and bring tender mercies into the room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. We love you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.